Good morning, bands. Happy Friday. It's Al here, uh, reporting in from my apartment. There's my prayer spot and my work spot. I wanted to talk to you guys today. Uh, I was inspired by John uh, about something which is topical to our upcoming theme, the warrior block. So we're going to start off. We're going to think about a question. Is it better for a running back to score one, ha have one handoff when he gets a handoff uh, the the, run, the the offensive linemen have already plowed over everyone. The, the fullback has gone to the second level, knocked over the linebackers. He basically can walk 50 yards in for a touchdown. That's one situation. The other is you have a running back who he has 10 handoffs, and each handoff, the defense is already in the backfield. He has to bust his hump to get four, like four or five yards of carry. He ends up with 10 carries for 45 yards, no touchdowns. Um, which is better, which is more admirable. We'll come back to that. During the warrior block, we're gonna talk about the four virtues that define a warrior. Those, those virtues are courage, endurance, zeal, and magnanimity. As with all virtue, there's a lot of crossover between a lot of these particular char characteristics, which we call virtues. Um, well, I guess what Aristotle calls activities of the soul. Uh, but uh, uh, we're going to focus on magnan magnanimity. Try saying that 10 times in a row. Magnanimity, magnanimity, magnanimity. It's hard. Um, maybe that's why we don't use the word that much. Or maybe we don't use the word that much because we are unfamiliar with, with the word and it's not a word or maybe even a, an element which is celebrated in culture today. Um, what is magnan magnanimity? It comes from the Latin magna animus. It means greatness of soul. And actually, in Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics, I dusted off my old copy for the first time in a while when I was going to the spot where he's, he's talking about virtues and he talks about magnanimity. Uh, I, I couldn't find it. The, I was told to look in, um, online to look in uh, a certain book, and, and all I saw was pride. And it turns out that the translations are so similar that actually they used, they used pride. Um, which was really confusing to me. And, and the reason why is because there's, I think there's a fine line between pride and magnanimity. Uh, pride is, 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 is doing great things for, for, for yourself and for yourself, whether for yourself, you, you do, you want what Aristotle calls desserts, desserts, meaning honor, um, accolades, uh, some sort of gratification or fulfillment for doing great things. And I think in some cases we are mistaken into thinking that we should not do great things because uh, we are doing things out of pride or we think that other people are doing great things out of pride because they want things for themselves. And in some cases, in many cases, that may be the case. I'm sure we all know someone who does great things all the time, um, but we're annoyed by them because we think uh, that they are very prideful. Um, and maybe that disincentivizes us from thinking of doing great things. An example of this is um, uh, uh, a friend of mine, we, I used to go to this, I still do sometimes, I guess I haven't recently because of the pandemic, but there's this Catholic group for like people out of college. Um, and a lot of people, there's different pods of group, pods of friends, but when you go there, you're socializing. And in order for the event to flourish, there, there requires some departing of oneself from oneself. So you have to kind of leave your comfort zone and express interest in other people and, you know, basic socializing. Um, but that kind of socializing requires you to uh, be animated and, and say, hey, like, what's what's going on? What's new with your life or whatever? And it, it, to the outsider, it may look like this guy's faking it. And maybe you kind of are faking it or feigning an interest, but it, you're, you're expanding yourself. You're you're, you're letting God uh, draw forth, expand your soul and expand your interest, expand your ability to love someone who you didn't know you loved before, you could love before. Uh, and and his, his comment on this group was, ah, those people are too magnanimous. That was actually the first time I had really considered or thought of the word was a couple of years ago when my friend said that. And my first inclination, I got I, props to my gut. My gut was like, wait, isn't that a good thing? Isn't it good to be magnanimous? 
And we, we kind of left it at that. We had a bit of a debate, and we, we actually we've, – we've made a big joke out of it. We've come into agreement that it, it actually is a good thing, and that's that's what a Catholic man should look like is someone who's animated and, and, and filled with zeal and vibrant and, and doing so for the sake of others. Um, the mistake is this guy is vibrant because he wants to look vibrant because he wants to look great because he cares about himself. And when he's doing that, he's really doing he, – he's acting like he's engaged in conversation because he wants others to see him. Um, that definitely exists. I've done it before. I'm, I'm sure a lot of us had have, and that's where pride comes in. Um, we want accolades. We want honor. But magnanimity would, would push us, would enlarge us uh, such that we want to love other people. Um, and so, so we are being magnanimous, and we are having a great soul, and we're allowing God to work through us as we reach these people. So um, magn- Aristotle calls magnanimity the, the crown jewel of all virtues because it enlarges all other, all other virtues. And while there are acts of greatness um, that are truly capital G great, I'm going to use Lord of the Rings again. Um, uh, Frodo is the hobbits had never really left the Shire before. They had some desire to be great. They had desire to hit the road. They wanted to know what, is, what adventure was like, but they never really knew how to do it. Um, they never had the vehicle to do it. They never had the opportunity to do it, to be great, to hit the road, um, to adventure. So they needed to be called forth by a great, a great something to, to do this, um, a great need. And of course, uh, the situation presents itself where they have to go to Mount Doom and cast a ring in and save Middle Earth. Um, and, and they do it. They, they, they remove, they separate themselves from themselves. They remove the smallness of heart. This comfort, this knownness of the Shire. They love the Shire. The Shire is great, but there's more to world than the Shire. They expand their heart, and they're able to, able to go and do something great. Um, and this is a great metaphor for what we can do in our lives. It doesn't have to be something like, I'm going to go be a an opera, a ghosting opera instead of studying accounting because that's great and it's really hard to do. Um, Maybe that's something for you. I have a good, a couple of friends in the University of Michigan uh, grad music, grad school music department, and they're great. But hey, uh, we need to focus on our daily lives. So, where how can we be magnanimous in our daily lives? I will give you an example, a very personal one. Um, my grandma died this year. They lived on the East Coast. I didn't have a great, well, I had I had a relationship with them, but it wasn't terribly close. We didn't see them that much. We saw them once a year at family reunions. And the conversation was always pretty quick and transactional. Um, I never felt like there was a great depth. And I also never invested in the relationship. So my mom has been encouraging me to call my grandpa, who I don't have a great relationship with since my grandma died, um, because it would be provide a great source of comfort and warmth for him. But I've been living in a place of fear. I've been living in a place of fear. I've been thinking, no, we don't have a good relationship. Why would I call him? Uh, I've been thinking that's not me. Um, I, I'm comfortable with where I am. I'm. I know myself. I know who I am. He knows himself. He knows who he am. He is. And also, I think that would be an act of pride to think that I could help him. Well, through God and through the expansion of my heart, I can quickly realize that that place of fear, like most places of fear, can be beat to death with just looking at it, shedding a, a small ray of light on it. I, it, there's no real, I, I, I wanna, I'm scared of being vulnerable, sure, but um, you get over that in, in five seconds after making a phone call. And, and, and in fact, in doing so, I will expand my ability to love because I will have conquered fear once. Well, God will have conquered fear by showing me like, if I remove myself and let him come in and I, I just call out of a place of love, then fear and, and fear will be conquered. And once that happens, once it repeats itself, uh, it, it, it becomes, becomes wholesale. It, it becomes profound and it flourishes. And, um, you have a lush valley of, of love conquering fear. I mean, that sounds so corny, but, um, uh, it's fear is fear can be dispelled so easily. There's a little bit of light, but we, we don't have the examples to do it in society. We, we forget to do it and we live within ourselves and ourselves will not provide the answer for overcoming fear and death and sin. We have to look outside of ourselves which is the exact nature of magnanim- magnanimity. Um, the last thing for you, I should probably throw some scripture in here, is um, uh, uh, Mark 
Mark, Mark uh, 12, 43, the poor widow's contribution. So they're in the temple. The poor widow gives two coins and Jesus calls his, his disciples to him. And he says, amen, I say to you, this poor widow put, more th more, put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she from her poverty has contributed all she had her whole livelihood. Another translation says abundance versus poverty. And that really struck me as um, we've got to contribute from, from, from our places of, of spiritual, social, virtue, poverty. If you're really good at something, great. That doesn't, mean, that doesn't make doing it worse. Um, if, if you're really good at connecting with people in a certain way and loving them in a certain way, keep on doing that. But the great thing about the call, for whole, call to holiness is there are countless virtues and we will never become fully perfect in any of them on this earth. So until our, our physical earthly deaths, we, we will always have some form of spiritual poverty from which we, can, we are called to contribute more. Um, so specifically today, I'm going to, I'm, this is kind of nerve wracking, but I'm going to uh, make this call to my grandpa. Um, I challenge you guys to think of some, some, something that you've been held back from, from a place of fear to be magnanimous, to, to shut up, you know, shut up all the, the doubts, the dispelling things in your, in your heart. Um, and don't be fearful to leave the known, to leave the comfortable because it is leaving the Shire, uh, that can lead us to greatness, leaving the Shire and having God as our guide. We can't forget that. We have to have Gandalf, God, the guide. We have to have that. We have to have sh someone show us the way. Um, and without that, it doesn't work. So, um, yeah, love. Uh, let's be magnanimous. I uh, look forward to seeing you guys on, uh, on Wednesday.